Hello and welcome back, I'm Bebal Joe and this is a tutorial for Workers and Resources Soviet Republic. Today I'll show you how to set up a new city. Great, to get started, first thing, pause the game. Workers and Resources is notorious for not letting you build the things that you want to build just because you think you can build them. So plan everything out. Planning means play and pause mode. And Next, I'll just show you how I like to set up my first city. The first city usually has a city core and buildings are just placed around that core after the core is completed. You can use this uh, usually for any hard mode or hard start mode because the base buildings that I will show you now, you will need regardless of what city you have. First, go into Equipment for Citizens. You have Grocery Store, Small Store, Shopping Center, Small Shopping Center, Cinema, football playground, tennis playground, and a pub. The only, you, you could place a grocery store and a small store. If you look in the warehouse, that's what they sell. This one sells clothes and electronics, and this one sells food and meat. You, the things that you need to provide are food, meat, and clothes. But if you look at the shopping centers, they sell both of those things at once. In the beginning, just to be cheaper, you could build the two stores because they're a little cheaper. If you look at the prices from Ruble, 3,000 and 3,000 versus shopping centers, 13,000. But having just one building that does everything, sometimes it's also easy. So I like to choose my small shopping center. If you know you're gonna build a bigger industry, build the large shopping center. It has three times the capacity for the warehouse, which is important when you have a lot of people. But when you start, small shopping center. Here we go. Really anywhere. Uh, one thing I would recommend, turn on your wireframe and look at where it's white, where there are white squares, because that means it's flat. Flat is better for you just to get started. So that's the first one. Then place a road out of it. If you play hard mode, this should be a mud road. But if you don't play hard mode, it doesn't matter that much. Just... Um, place a road. I would highly recommend getting one of the last ones because your walking speed increases the distance your citizens can walk. That's important. After you place a grocery store, you want to get a, a bus station. In a bus station, you can just place a normal bus stop like this, um, a bus platform like this, or a smaller platform like this. The only difference with them is the passenger capacity, which is how many people can wait at a bus stop. Here, it just matters how many people do you have to serve. If you have a big city, you want to have at least 500 passengers. If you have a smaller city, you can just use the smaller bus stops. And you can also use more than one bus stop to pick up people, which I would recommend if you want to build your own anything. So to start, just put two bus stops like this. One side note, the bus platform is more right now in vanilla. You cannot drive through this. It's a bug. There is a mod that is the same bus platform, but you can drive through it. But in vanilla, you cannot drive through this bus stop, even though it looks like you have two, you have an entry and an exit. So just side note, but the small bus stops that are placed here, these bus stops, you can drive through. So use those. They make your life a little easier. Great. Now you have bus stops and a grocery store. Wonderful. And you can walk and drive through the bus stops. Let's go back to our equipment for citizens and look at the next thing. Cinema. Cinema is for entertainment. Entertainment is a basic need for all your citizens. You have to give them some entertainment uh, in some shape or form. Where you're gonna place this, keep it close to your uh, city center. Your city center, design it however you want it. There is no right or wrong. Just make it so that you like it, that you like how it looks. This is how I set mine up, but I usually do this differently every time I start a new game. The next thing, sports. It's a basic need, you have two options. You can place the football playground or the tennis playground here. These, however, since we, if you play with seasons on, it will say at the bottom, require weather temperature above five degrees Celsius. You can also go to tourism and there's an indoor pool. It also, uh, satisfies the sport need, but it doesn't have a minimum heat requirement. So placing this will work all year round. Placing the outdoor activities will not work all year round. Place this somewhere. It doesn't matter a lot. Here is a secret hint. 
If your citizens can make it to the shopping center, they will go to the shopping center, do all their shopping, and then they will try to satisfy their entertainment and actually walk there from the shopping center and sport as well. So they will effectively extend their range if they can make it to the shopping center. Just something to consider. When you place these, maybe you can go ahead and build a couple things if you feel like this is a good setup. If you're not sure and you're gonna uh, maybe change some things later, definitely keep it in planning. But this is how it looks now. And if you hit, uh, hover over your buildings, you can see view buildings that can be reached by foot from here. This distance um, can be extended by using asphalt roads that have 115% walking speed, where gravel only has a 75% walking speed. So having better roads extends the walking range by almost a third, no, almost a quarter. And then footpaths, have a walking speed of 112%. So definitely connect everything at the end with footpaths. Very important. Once you have this placed, you're pretty much almost done with the basic needs. There is a fire station that if you play with fires on, you don't want to miss out on this. There are mods that have smaller fire stations and cheaper fire stations, but if you play vanilla, definitely place that one. You will need workers in all of these buildings. So as long as you have people close enough for all these buildings, you'll be fine. The next thing you can choose to build is a hospital. A hospital right at the beginning is not super important because the people that you get are generally healthy. But the longer you run, the more people will get sickly, will get older. Um, I believe childbirth has some um, health issues. And there's just some other things in between, like pollution and heat and, uh, I mean, uh, cold temperatures and other things that can also hurt your health. So if you look at your population statistics, health, this bar should always be close to full. If that is full, you don't need a hospital. If it's not full, get a hospital. At the beginning, I usually choose not to get a hospital. And here you are. That's your city center for now. There are more things that you need and we will let the fire station complete education related. S kindergartens and schools. You have to supply kindergarten for parents that have kindergarten age kids. If they don't have a kindergarten where they can send their kids to, they essentially can't work. So there are workers that are unavailable to work. And if you have too many of those, that's bad. Kids usually come through in, in waves, so you may not need all your spaces in your kindergarten for a little while, but then all of a sudden there's this big wave of, wave of kids and you don't have enough spaces. Don't react to that all the time. Just plan for a good amount of kindergartens and live with that until your population really grows. I don't have a good percentage for that, but you don't have to jump on it just because you see 10 parents or 10 workers can't work because of kindergarten needs. So just keep that in mind. School? You will need to teach kids that are out of kindergarten age, but also adults that don't have an education level of at least one. They, they get this little symbol that's ABC, basic education. That's what you want. If they don't at least have this, they cannot work. Schools, usually one or two are good for a mid-sized uh, city, simply because you can go to school when you can go to school. Once you're school age or older, you can go to school whenever there's room in the school. And so people will get their education eventually. And again, the same as uh, kindergarten kids, they come in waves. So you have a lot of them and then you have a little of them, a lot of them, a little of them. So a school can balance that out a little bit that you have your people um, get education throughout their, their lives. They may be a little older before they can start working for you, but they can get education. So school is not as important to have a lot of. So I usually put that in my center too. And there you go. You have everything basically set up. And this is great. There are things you can add here. For example, a road cargo station could be added to our um, grocery store setup. What that would do is you could deliver your own goods to the grocery store or to the shopping center. If you look, the shopping center only has two parking spots, but we will need four different uh, cargo pieces or cargo deliveries. So you couldn't have four trucks parking here because they will just block uh, the entrance. 
So if you want to deliver your own uh, cargo or just buy it and then deliver it, you will need a cargo station like this. You have to connect it via road somewhere. I don't know where a good place for it is, so we'll just go out here. And there you go. Get all of this built, and this is really your basic start. Maybe one thing I should mention, if you have a fire station, you have to buy vehicles before you can fight fire. And the vehicles have a level, speed level, that's also the number of firefighters that will work here. You don't have to fill it up completely, but get enough. Get enough vehicles to handle your firefighters. Great. Now we are here. I'll just let the buildings complete. And then you can think about adding workers. If you play vanilla, residential buildings, there's no right or wrong. Right now there's a quality of flats um, as a number in here. It doesn't make a difference for your citizens yet. It doesn't mean down the road it won't make a difference, but right now it doesn't matter. So just pick a building that you like. There's some that are really big and some that are smaller. Right now I think this one, uh, the prefab, the flats the prefab, down at the bottom right with 189 workers is the largest you can build. So if you just want to do that, this is fine. I can tell you that this prefab with 75 workers is the biggest bang for buck on the, the size that you build it on. So you can make very compact, high density um, living areas with this. So let's just start with this one. One thing I will tell you you should do is turn off the get citizens so you can decide who lives in your flats when you're done and just start placing them. One thing you may want to consider is keep your junctions to a minimum. So when you place these, try to not place them like really next to each other like this because that will create a really small piece of road in between. And if you ever want to upgrade it or if you ever want to do something else with it, that's going to be a pain. So try to keep your junctions like this, just lined up and just place a couple few buildings. If you play in hard mode, I can promise you 200 people will get you started pretty well. If you play any other mode, a thousand is a good size for a starter city. You don't need to have a thousand, but it's good. When you set up your city, try to not only have one path in and out, because if you do ever upgrade something, your road will be closed and then you will need another way. So just, that's why I put, put another um, road here. Add a couple more buildings. Try to leave a little bit of extra space in between them. You get a feeling for this, but a little bit of extra space will allow you to actually add footpaths to everything. And again, here I'm trying to keep the junctions just nice and neat, and that should be good. And now I'm going to footpaths. It's an infrastructure footpaths over here. I have it on my hotkeys, for me it's four, but you do that however you want. And then you try to connect essentially your city as you have it. You will run into this issue where you put a footpath really close to something and then you can't connect something. All this means is you, you just went too close and it's not gonna connect there. So back it up, this is why we're in planning mode. Reset your, your footpath, connect it somewhere, make sure you can connect the place where you couldn't connect before and you're golden. Here it's the same um, idea, keep your junctions to a minimum, even though footpaths, you can't upgrade from a gravel footpath, so it's not as important once it's built, it's built, and it's great. But until then, you wanna keep, um, keep your junctions as low so you can build larger pieces at once. You don't have to connect everything, there's no need for it, but connect enough that it makes sense, that it looks pretty, just however you want to do it. There's no right or wrong here, it's just don't go cheap or don't go too cheap. But yeah, just do it however you want to do it. I like to connect a lot of them, especially if it means I can give them a shortcut because right now this pool was only reachable on this side on the road. Just by connecting this little footpath here, you can now reach it from pretty much anywhere on in the city. And that will help you get more people to those locations. Add a couple more places here. This did an, add another junction. So now there's a road here and a road on this side. Just pick them wisely. Don't have a lot of them, but if you need them, you need them and that's fine. Let's get all of this built. Wonderful. And check how we're doing. The thing that you wanna check, where can they walk to? 
go to this view buildings that can be reached on foot. 258 meters on gravel, on a gravel, um, gravel road is okay. You can get close to 300. Don't try to map it out. You can, you can place a road like this and it will tell you the total length of how long that road is. Don't worry about that too much. Think about it more like this. This is my full screen. This is fully scrolled in. This is fully scrolled out. When you're about half screen in, and you can count the squares. You can count the squares that we have here. When you're about half screen in, this is a good distance for what you can reach on a gravel path. If you add a asphalt road, you may be able to reach a little more than that. Not a lot, but a little more than that. So just keep that in mind. Just don't go too far out and you should be okay. You get a feeling for this after a while. This is how I set mine up. The last thing I will uh, will tell you, make sure that everyone can reach your um, bus stops. That's important. And then just add a couple more paths to get to different things that you may have connected here. And that's great. Can anyone work at the fire station? It looks like we can even from out here. So that's perfect. So this one is th 319 meters and 309 meters to the pool. All that's great. As long as there's a blue line connecting whatever building you have to whatever building you want to go to, people can walk there if they live there and you don't need to supply any transportation. So this is wonderful, but we're not done yet. If you play with all settings on, you want to will need to supply power. This one will tell you building is without power supply. How do we fix that? Go to medium high voltage or medium voltage and find this electric substation. I like to place these relatively central. They can supply a lot of power and I made a small mistake. If you can place these in a place where there's only a footpath, delete the footpath because footpaths are still relatively cheap and we should be in planning mode. Delete the footpath, find a place where you can place this. Everything is green, it will tell electric substation or say electric substation to you. Place it, try to connect it somewhere where there's already a junction. You don't want to add another junction to this. And then just add your footpath back in. Footpaths, you can get really close to buildings, but buildings cannot get really close to footpaths. So footpaths should always be the last thing you build. And then the next thing you want to build is some voltage, uh, high voltage wire, I would just say, Use the biggest one for your city. You don't want to run out of power. As a rule of thumb, I will tell you, try to run next to the road. It keeps everything nice and clean and just causes less issues down the road. Place your transformer, you need that. Then connect your wire to the transformer. Excuse me. Then take a high voltage wire. 18 is the biggest. If you want to use that, that's fine. If you're close to the border, that's great. If you're not close to the border, um, you just have to build a little longer path. That is up to you. I would start near the border when I start, but you don't have to. If you play just vanilla, use the high voltage switch because you will not have another way to connect to this uh, high voltage switch unless you add your own switch. And that's what I did. So now we have another switch there. All of this is auto build. Connect all your buildings to some road or some road connection. I'm just adding some roads here. It's more like a, not a grid, but it's, I find it neat. It's fine if you don't, it's really, it's completely up to you. That's why I didn't want to make this tutorial for a long time because I found it's very personal. However you want to do it. I connect all my roads. I connect all my buildings to the roads. Everything can get, can get built. When it's built, maybe check that your fire station is in range of all the buildings that you build, because if anything burns down, you will have a problem. So you just hover anywhere on the fire station, any building that is green, any road that is yellow is covered by the fire station. Beautiful. Most buildings will tell you building without power supply at this point. What you need to do is go to your power station where you want to import it from. Make sure you select the import purchased mode and tell the, tell the game how many megawatts you want to import at most. Set it to 100%, you only pay for what you need. You're not paying for what you're allowed to import. So set it up like this. Now your buildings will tell you they're fine, they just need people. 
and we are doing pretty good. There's just a couple more things before you can get started on actually playing. One thing, winter is not here yet, but winter is coming. If you play with seasons on, you need heating related things. These are the first industry that you will place, most likely, potentially. <clears throat> Construction industry probably comes first. But that's in a different video, I'll try to link that. You can build a small and a large heating plant. Look at all the numbers that are in here. There's environment pollution, and that is important. Do not place your industries that create pollution near your cities. If you do, you need to place one of these pollution monitoring stations, and I'll show you that right now. Place it anywhere. It's just a footpath that connects to it. When it's done, you can hover over it. Dosimeter, this will tell you how much radiation um, is somewhere, if you play with nuclear power somewhere. But view actual pollution has these green dots. As long as they're green, that there is no pollution. If they turn any other color, there is pollution. You do not want any of the buildings in your city without green dots, because that means your health will go down. And if your health goes down because of pollution, your hospital cannot handle it. Pretty simple. So make sure you keep pollution away from your city, which means you have to place your first industry a little further away from the city. What's a good, what's a good range? Let's see, what, what can I tell you? This is 300 meters. I would say start by 500 meters away from your city. Once you place it and once the industry actually goes or is running, you can see um, the range of pollution. The pollution will move though. There's wind in the game that you may not realize, but pollution will move with the wind. So it stays really close to your industry at all times, but then the bubble where it actually is will move around the map a little bit. It's not a lot of movement, a few hundred meters, but just make sure you're aware of that. So when you find a place where you're comfortable with placing industries, build it. I would always build the large heating plant. It's just a lot more efficient. And if you are, if the red line starts showing up, that means pollution is pretty close to this. So right now it says 435 meters is, or 408 meters is the closest. Your pollution is probably going to be around 400 meters. You can put, you can put this here. You will only get a couple people sick that are over there. But once you expand your city, that city will be more in the pollution zone. So pull it away. Don't let it sit in... Um, in the pollution zone at all Just place it somewhere here. Maybe try to keep the brown arrows that you see there pointing at your city because you're going to have to place pipes there and That will make it just a little is easier and connect your uh, Connect your roads for that then go back to heating related and place a heat exchanger If you look small cities will be fine bigger cities this is important the heat exchanger says the heat water tank is 300 cubic meters on the bottom, uh, the bottom part of that info window. If you click on any of these buildings, you will see also a cubic meter number here. In this case, this building is 5 cubic meter. All of these buildings will be the same. This building is 7 cubic meter, uh, theater. The school is 7. The pool is 5, and so on eventually you will go past the capacity of the heat exchanger when you pass that capacity the heat exchanger cannot fill up the heating barometer all the way if the heating barometer can't be filled up all the way your temperature which is what this uh, temperature gauge is will fall really low you want to keep it as close to 20 as you can all year round if it's below that people will get sick that's bad your hospital can handle a little bit of cold temperature but not a lot doesn't matter how many hospitals you will add. If all your people are suffering from cold, you will not be able to catch up. So keep your heat uh, uh, appropriate. Place a heat exchanger. I would generally just place the big ones. Place them so that the first heat exchanger, they have a bigger range than a lot of other things in the game. Place it so that your first heat exchanger covers the majority, the, your first city. There's no pollution coming from this. But you want to cover as much as you can. You can place it further over here, but there is a range of the pipes that you can actually run. After that, the pipe loses heat, 
And that will mean of the 300 cubic meter that are supposed to get to the heat exchanger, only a few hundred are actually getting there. So keep all of that in mind, uh, distance matters. Also, the heat exchanger needs power. So there's a yellow line running there. You also want to keep that, I think 250, 300 meters? 300 meters is the max that you get. So just place it somewhere where it seems right. Put it down. Get your uh, pipes. If you use the big heat exchanger, use the big pipe. No question, really. I mean, just... That's almost just common sense. The way I place mine, I use... You can use E and Q. Q is lowering. E is raising. Put them at least... This is normal. One, two, three high. If you put them three high, you can get over any of your roads and you can build underneath the pipes later on. Especially in the beginning, you will not think of everything right away. Don't, don't fool yourself into thinking you can plan for everything right away. So set yourself, plan, plan for failure. Don't plan to fail. Uh, not planning to fail is planning for failure. So plan to fail. Plan with a contingency plan. Figure out what you want to do. Pipe is placed. Wonderful. Everything can be built. And when that is done, we are almost ready. City building is hard. And that's why I think it's very much up to everyone how they want to design their city, how they want to set up their city, how they want to run their city. Because at this point, we have almost everything. We are set up to auto build. If you don't want to auto build, there's always these two buttons up here, purchase resources using dollars and purchase resources using rubles. Pick whatever you want to do. It more depends on what you have for your dollar. But click on that, set whatever number you want here. There's no reason if you auto purchase something to have it set to more than the minimum. If you don't want it, just set it to zero. If you want to delete all of them, you can clear all. That's not going to delete all your stuff. But these little purchase signs that are on top of it, they will go away. I'll just show you. Like this. So you just keep whatever you had in there. You can go back and say, nope, I want that now. Again, set it to the minimum that you allowed. And it will just really stay at that point. So when you have all that set up, leave it as is. Everything should be fine. And you can set up your first people. When you get your first people, definitely at least get immigrants from the Soviet bloc. Do not use immigrants from the third world. They're uneducated, they're sick. So you will essentially just use the, uh, lose them right away. Get immigrants from the Soviet bloc for sure. And then also get one building with immigrants expert from the Soviet blocs. Those are um, university educated workers and they can be teachers which are, are required in your schools you need staff but also teachers you have this little symbol with people with ties i describe them that's what you need educated people for i highly recommend getting one full building of just educated people they're more expensive but then add buildings where sh citizens should go and select the buildings where you actually need educated people just send them there and they will not work anywhere else. That's all you want to do. For the rest of the workers, they can work wherever they want, but the educated people you want to keep. That's especially important later on when you need to add a university, which is something you should do soon because without a university, you will not get more people with university education. So when you run out of people with a university education, you won't have teachers, you won't have doctors, you won't have engineers, you won't have... A lot of stuff that you need to be successful. So plan for where you can put your universities. At this point, technical university and medical university do the same thing. They will just teach people, but technical university has a couple research things for chemicals and mechanical components and electronic components. There's a few things you can research, but they're really big. This should be one of your earlier um, building projects if you wanna build it, otherwise just place it somewhere in the city where it can reach anything it needs. Great. You may have noticed that I did not buy a pub. Pubs are not required. If you look at this, this may look like alcohol need, but no, it's alcohol addiction. So the red line here is bad. You want this red line to be as low as possible because you don't want alcohol addiction. If you have a lot of unemployed people and you supply alcohol, 
alcohol addiction goes up. With alcohol addiction, your health will go down because alcohol addiction is a disease. So don't supply alcohol and you don't have to worry about that. If you do supply alcohol, you do have to worry about that and then you have to deal with it. So I don't do pubs unless I have, uh, unless I'm late in the game, really late, 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 late game. Great. We have some people now, they're working, they're doing stuff. Some of them may go to the bus stops. Most of them will go try to fulfill their needs right away. And it will take a while. The first thing you will see in our situation here is two workers can't work because there's no kindergarten. We need to fix that. That was the reason earlier what I was telling you that if you need a kindergarten, you need a kindergarten. So just place it somewhere in planning mode. Make sure you can connect a road to it. If you can't connect a road to it, the first thing you should do is remove the footpath. Then try again to connect the road. Now it works. And now if you reconnect the footpath, it will work. Just a little tip, it works. Um, once you have all that connected and all that done, maybe connect another footpath if you need. It's not totally required, but at this point you have everything your city needs to survive the first year. The second year you will need a university and probably also a hospital. So if you're happy with your whole setup, if you go here and your people are not complaining about a lot of stuff, that means you are set up correctly. You can just go ahead and invite more normal people. And you just do this until you have as many people as you want. Don't fill up all of them because they will procreate, ideally at a higher rate than they die. And if you don't have enough room, you will increase the number of people working with, your par with their parents. And if that happens, eventually they will leave if you don't supply them with room. So don't fill up all your buildings right away. Just fill them up somewhat until you're happy. Once you have everything, you should see some workers waiting at your different bus stations. And you can use those with your bus routes. And I will show you that quick. You need a road vehicle depot before you can buy any, set up any bus routes, really. So do that. Go to your bus or go to your depot, buy whatever bus you want. It doesn't matter at the beginning much and just click on whichever platform you want and click on the ne next platform. In this case, they will probably get tours from, from the border post that are not gonna go anywhere because I'm not actually supplying any tourist needs at this point. But that's how you set up the bus, that's where you buy the bus. And the reason I set up two bus platforms like this, you can use one for your general bus transport if you need workers somewhere, but the other one you can use for your construction offices. So if you set up the vanilla construction office, this is not how you should set this up. Watch my hard uh, series start. I'll try to link that. When you set this up, you can just tell your construction office to always go to the one bus stop that you're not using to pick up workers. And you will always have people there to pick up. So your bus, uh, your construction office buses will never run empty. And that's what you want. This is how you can start uh, the first city. This was a lot longer than I expected it to be. But make it your own, have fun with it. Just set up the city however you want. Make different city blocks, make big city blocks, make small city blocks, make a city just from the center out where you have all the needs on the outside skirts of the city. Make a modular city. You can actually use this clone copy area to just go in, copy the parts that you like, and then place it somewhere else on the map. You can adjust this however you want, but you place that and then it will be built there. Great. You can do that with all your city blocks if you really want to. This guy has his little symbol on top. That means he doesn't have gas. He doesn't have fuel. You need a gas station if you have uh, fuel set up. He's stuck there now. He can't go anywhere. You don't have to put it right where he is. They will find the closest gas station if it's in some reasonable range. I just put it here. Uh, I shouldn't have put it there. <laughs> the building needs power supply. So... That was a bad, uh, bad gesture. I should have just stopped when I was ahead. But place your gas station somewhere where it's in range of the power that you're already getting. Don't put it in the middle of the city. That's just good real estate area. But over here should be just fine. 
He has power. This guy's gonna get there, and everything is happy. Thank you guys for watching. If you like what you saw, like and subscribe. If you didn't, tell me what else you want me to cover. And appreciate you. Have fun building. Uh, cities are fun. Cities are one of the bigger, bigger pieces of organizing this with uh, with industries. So have fun with it. There's no right or wrong answer. It's just you, however you want it. And I hope you liked it. Thanks for watching. Bye.